What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Ducky 1-2 Mini and whether or not it's the right mechanical keyboard for you. Now, since everyone is so patient and always wants to wait till the end of the video for the sound test, I'm gonna wait and put it at the extreme end of the video. I'm just kidding. Here's a sound test for the Ducky 1-2 Mini. I have the red switches and we'll talk more about that later, but here's a sound test because yeah, you know why. And again, those were the Cherry MX Red switches that you just heard. Now, when we're first talking about this board, it does actually come with a few accessories, which is kind of cool. You get a keycap puller, you get a bunch of extra keycaps, which is like super cool. And it's not just like one or two keycaps, you get like 10 extra keycaps for the board. They're all red. Um, and then you get like the special ducky space bar, the one that everybody knows with all the art on it. So they do give you a little bit of a way to customize your board. Although I will say the USB-C cable is nothing special. It literally looks like a plain black USB-C cable with that's like kind of shiny. There's no, not literally nothing special about it. No colors, no special coding, nothing. It's just a black cable. Okay, now starting at the top, this board can cost anywhere from $99.99 to about $129.99, depending on where you look. They were varying prices all over. I couldn't find like a consistent price. Mechanicalkeyboards.com does have it listed for a hundred bucks though. So I'm probably more willing to go with the hundred dollar price point than the other ones. Something that did surprise me about this keyboard for the price range at least is it's a fully plastic keyboard and it definitely feels like it. Um, it's like a shiny kind of plastic when you pick it up and you touch it, you can definitely tell that it's cheap plastic. It doesn't feel premium, I guess. It's not necessarily cheap, it just doesn't feel premium. And this is a 60% keyboard, so you do lose the number pad, you do lose some function keys, the arrow keys, those kind of stuff. Um, but if you're looking at this keyboard anyways, you probably already know what a 60% keyboard is. Although this keyboard does have some functionality to make up for the lost keys, and we'll talk about that later. The way that this keyboard connects, uh, there's no wireless, it's wired, uh, USB-C cable, USB-C to USB-A, left side of the keyboard, and there are definitely some problems with this board in terms of the USB-C cable, at least I had problems with it. And I was definitely finding more reports on Reddit and just all over the internet about people having problems with loose USB-C ports. In my experience, what happened was it would plug into the computer, it would work fine, but if I like slightly tapped the keyboard, it would disconnect and reconnect automatically, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because if, as long as it reconnects, you can still use it. But if you were typing when it disconnected, it would just continue typing that thing and if you were gaming it would just continue like walking you in a certain direction that you were holding down when the keyboard disconnected and reconnected and then you have to like mash a few keys to get it to register that you're not holding that key anymore and it, it, it seemed kind of weird that the USB-C port was like a problem on these boards and it has never been addressed there's some weird USB-C ports out there on these boards sometimes so just be aware of that this board also is fully RGB but in a weird way because there's no software with it there are literally like dozens of ways to customize this board by holding down specific keys and then this key and then pushing this key and then that key. So you can customize this board pretty extensively, but there's literally like full YouTube guides out there on how to customize the board because there's so much hidden like functionality. And there is a guide too, so you can read the guide. Um, but there are just so many steps to customize it. It's kind of insane. Although this board does come with a lot of preset RGB settings, so you don't necessarily need to customize it yourself. Um, if you just want RGB, there's a ton of different pre-made settings and modes that you can filter through. And then you can also adjust the color of these modes by holding down the ZX and C keys. You can like adjust the red, green, and blue uh, prominence in the RGB settings, which is kind of a cool feature. I've never seen that before. On the back of this board, you will find the four dip switches. Dip switches one through three basically adjust the location and the enabled or disabled state of the function windows and alt keys. And then dip switch four enables or disables N key rollover, which if you don't know, basically means you can press as many keys as you want to, and it'll continue registering those keys. Speaking of the, the hidden um, features, like in all the keys, there's actually like a Minesweeper game hidden in the board that you can like play Minesweeper on your keyboard if you want to. There's that, and there's also a way to use your mouse through the keyboard. 
So you can simulate like mouse clicks and mouse movements through your keyboard, which is something I've definitely never seen before. Going back to the switches, this board does come with two options of switches, at least on mechanicalkeyboards.com. You get kale and cherry switches, which are fine for me. I personally have the cherry MX reds. I'm a big red switch guy. I like my linear switches. Reds, they felt good. They felt like every other cherry switch out there that I've ever had, they felt good. I, there's, I really have nothing to say wrong about them. They're cherry switches, so they're pretty reliable. They're pretty well known. They're gonna feel like every other cherry switch you've ever had. Now starting to get into a little bit more of the negatives about this board. Again, this is not me saying you should not get this board for these reasons. It's just something to be aware of. I already told you about the USB-C port issue where it can be loose and, and uh, funky and some people have it disconnecting, reconnecting, that kind of stuff. There's another issue that I found on uh, online which almost happened to me and I thought it did happen to me. You're actually able to brick this board, like completely brick the keyboard, it won't work anymore and you have to send it back to Ducky to get a new one because it, there's no way to fix it kind of bricking. And the way that you do this, you can actually update this board by plugging it into your computer. It has to be a Windows computer. They do not have a Mac compatible update for this. So if you download the updater on your Windows computer, you hold down, I think, D and L, and then you plug in the board to your computer, it puts it into update mode. However, if you unplug the board while it's updating on accident, which by the way, can happen very easily because the USB-C port is loose on a lot of boards, it will brick the board in a lot of cases. If you, so basically if you cancel the update mid update by disconnecting the board, even if it's on accident because the USB-C cable is loose, it will brick the board. And there's a ton of cases of this all over Reddit and the only way that people have found to solve this is to go to Ducky support and, and email them and ask them to send them a new board. I emailed Ducky support because of the loose USB-C port and I actually never heard back. They just never responded to me. It's been about a week now. I guess with all the stuff going on, there's a little bit more of a leniency there, but I just never heard back. So I have no idea if you're able to get in contact with them or anything like that. They did not respond to me. Now for the part that everyone always loves to rip on me for, my opinion, uh, I... I don't know, this this board is kind of interesting for me because it's very expensive for what it is. It's also a 60% keyboard, so you're paying more for less, and there's a, quite a few known issues with it. However, I've, I have a Ducky Zero Shine or something, they don't even like sell it anymore, it's really hard to find on the internet. It has a hardwired cable, that kind of stuff. I've had that board for like eight years, and it's never had anything wrong with it. I, it's worked perfectly, it's been a workhorse, never had an issue with it. So I, I like to say that Ducky is a good brand and that they have good quality stuff. However, it does feel like they had maybe a QA issue here and then they didn't respond to my email when I contacted their support. So that's kind of a weird thing as well. I don't know. I would say if you're willing and able, to, if you're willing to take the risk to get a board like this and then you're able to return it without going through Ducky. So if you get this through mechanical keyboards or Amazon, I'd say go for it. Try it out, see if you like it. I would be wary of getting this board if you do not have a solid return policy and if you're not able to get in contact with somebody who could easily get you a replacement or give you your money back just because of how many issues I saw all over the internet of people having with this board. And that is kind of my review of the Ducky one too many. Overall, I would say it's a pretty decent board for a hundred bucks. Go ahead and try it, see if you like it. Again. I, I'm personally, if you guys have seen the other videos, I'm personally a TKL guy and I have the uh, HyperX Origins Pro. Best keyboard I've ever reviewed, I've ever bought. I love this thing so much, so it's very hard for me to look at a keyboard that's $20, $30 more expensive than this one, whereas this one is uh, aluminum, this one has software for it, this one uh, has great support, this one doesn't have USB-C issues. It's hard for me to look at all those pros of this board and then be like, wow, I'm paying $20, $30 more for a fully plastic board that has issues and support issues, but Ducky is a well-known brand. They generally make good boards, so I would say go try it if you can. And one last note before I go, everybody always, always, always in the comments always likes to be like, hey Brian, um, I think you have a defective board there. I don't think it's fair for you to review the keyboard in that way. Well, you know what? If it's defective, then that's on the company. It's a QA issue. They have their own problems that they need to figure out. And it is a reflection of their work and their attention to detail if they are shipping boards that have problems. Yes, it might be a defective board, but that also means that you might get a defective board because their QA process is terrible or something's going wrong and it's a reflection of their work and of their attention to detail, like I said. So I may have a defective board, but you might get one too. So, meh. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. That is gonna wrap up my review of the Ducky One Too Many. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.